Chapter 6 So you've got a phone now, have you? It was Spider Matthews who said this, rather demanded this information, as soon as Robert had gone. Simon was just walking towards the classroom when Spider, who could simply be described as the class bully, and his henchman mate, Nobby Rotrain, pushed Simon into an alcove. No, I haven't got a phone, half grunted Simon. Not that it's any business of yours anyway. They were close to the school building and he was feeling brave. Usually, when two of the class thugs had you up against a wall, it was sensible not to be aggressive. He's lying, Spider. Shall I bash him one? Nobby always had a simple approach. If he wanted to convince someone of the need to talk to his boss, his first response was to punch or slap them somewhere on their body. Spider looked at Simon curiously. You were talking about using a phone to that older kid, he snarled. He's my cousin. He phoned me last night about something and phoned on my house phone. Simon could see no reason not to give a simple explanation to Spider Matthews. While he was talking to Matthews, then Nobby would leave him alone. Anyway, this answer seemed to be sufficient, or perhaps it was the teacher walking past them into school that stopped the interrogation. The teacher was carrying an armful of books and a case and looking for someone to open the door. Spider was very quick to sum up the situation and order Nobby to open the door. Why me? Why don't you order him, pointing to Simon, to do it? Come on, Nobby, open the door, before I drop this lot, jokingly growled the teacher. Can I hold them for you, sir? said Spider, all smarmy and too late to actually be of any help, but pleased to have made the gesture. In the building, the two class thugs strolled to their place, while Simon moved a chair so the teacher could sit down. What were you doing with those two? the teacher asked. I wouldn't have thought you were special mates. They're not, replied Simon. But it's all under control, sir. You've no need to worry. The teacher looked somewhat doubtful about this answer, but instead of pursuing the matter, launched into the topic for the morning's lesson. Soon he was engrossed in other matters. Simon, on the other hand, was thinking about May, his cousin from Singapore, who had turned up in his room last night, and what Robert was going to say after lunch. At the same time, he was thinking through this. He was trying to get some of Sir's topic into his own exercise book. Spider didn't seem totally sure that he had got the truth from Simon. He thought he'd better keep a special eye on him, on what Simon and Robert were doing for a few days. Nobby looked concerned, but not about Simon. He had long since forgotten about Simon and mobile phones and who had one and who didn't. Instead, he was trying to figure out how Spider was going to manage with only one eye the other being kept on Simon. It sounded a bit painful. When the lunch bell went, Simon was out of the door so fast his classmates thought he must have, it must be his favourite pudding in the canteen today. Simon knew differently. He had surreptitiously packed 
packed all his things into his bag as the clock ticked towards lunchtime. He darted along the corridor and out into the playground and was off towards the games field before Spider and Nobby had left their desk. Robert, already out there, had started heading towards the cricket pavilion when he saw Simon in the distance. Simon immediately understood where he was heading and was soon up level with him and moving round to the other side of the pavilion, where the huge cricket roller stood for most of the winter, chained so that groups of pupils could not take it for a walk. Had a good morning, asked Robert. Well, it would have been if I hadn't had Spider Matthews and Nobby Rotrain roughing me up in the corridor after you left because they thought they overheard something about Mia having a mobile phone. Simon spoke fast, but he hadn't been that disturbed by the thugs. I don't think there are, they are aware of anything strange with the phone. They just finally fancy finding out if I have one and then either nicking it from me or borrowing it every so often to make their, their calls on it. Robert was somewhat anxious about someone else using the phone. But you don't bring that phone to school, do you? he said. No, I don't, answered Simon. It causes enough trouble when I use it at home. Heaven only knows what would happen if I used it once in school. The next thing I know, the place will probably be crawling with police or secret service or... I don't know. This time he really did sound worried. Robert walked to the edge of the pavilion and sneaked a look back at the school. Although there were all sorts of kids milling about at the playgrounds and some on the grass, the spider and knobby duo were nowhere to be seen. He went back to Simon. OK, Simon, now relax. You haven't got a dog, have you? Simon looked puzzled. Why do you ask? You know I don't. I wanted one for Christmas. But when we went into the pet shop, we discovered that Dad sneezed when he was near dogs. He's got some allergy, coughing and spluttering all over the place, and we'd only been in there ten minutes. Anyway, why do you ask? Robert listened to all this and then said simply, Code. When I want to know something about the phone, I will ask you about your dog. We won't ever mention phones again in school. It might even be good, a good idea when your parents are about too. Simon was quick to catch on. So when I took my dog for a walk and called on you and you came over to my house, what was the experience like? Robert smiled and then frowned. I was sitting in my room just about to get into bed. The dog barks and I pick it up. I hear your voice, and whoosh, I'm with you. I didn't experience flying through the air, or a great explosion, no electro, electric, electrical charges running through my body, nothing unusual. I pick up an answer in one place, and then find myself in another. Can you explain it? It had happened to Robert twice, and so quick, well, quicker than quick, instant, instantaneously, two times. Simon looked at Robert. 
I know what happened. I got an old mobile phone from a car boot sale. I took it home, charged it up, and you're the first person I called. I hadn't tried calling Mum and Dad for fear of, the co of what consequences I might bring down upon myself if I did call them. All I know is that when I call someone, they suddenly appear next to me. At that point, some kids came round the edge of the pavilion, chasing a ball. Robert and Simon just picked up their bags and decided to head back to the school in the canteen. And you haven't said anything about May and her dog walk, said Robert as they crossed the grass onto the tarmac playground. Can we walk the dog tonight around 9.30 again, he asked. Sure, said Simon as they headed towards the canteen.